when Falcon enters the Grand Salon of Hashishan, he is stunned by the fabulous decor. Mm -hmm. Tame gazelle, reflecting pool, and the culture, the high culture of the entourage, and a closing jewelry of the old man. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, the old man appears, and Falcon taunts him uh, that his sneaky assassins are outnumbered. Like four to one. And uh, he owes him 200 gold ducats for back rent. And actually, at another 100, eight, 800 gold ducats, rounded up to 1,000 gold ducats because uh, my castle, ancestral <coughs> mud and cedar beam castle, ended up as a collapsed mud cake with a little straw sticking out the side. Hashishan, <laughs> he smiles smugly mm, as a bravado of this upstart uh, son from Khorasan. And he says, oh, Falcon, maybe your mother should have slept with camels. You'd be more attractive. As for the rent, after the hashish barrel explosion, uh, I forgot. I simply forgot in the rush to uh, uh, get out. They had one. I had one one devotee with his pants on fire. Um. Okay, and uh, for the uh, eight hundred other gold ducats, how's he, Sean? He snaps his fingers and his grand vizier. <laughs> All decked out in finery, silks, translucent silks. Uh, yeah. And then he says, look, warlord, you're salty. <clears throat> From the great salt desert of Do Turbati, Hedari, who's militia mutinous, by the way. We have our sources. Uh, my, any of these salon eunuchs are more powerful you know, than any of your unmade, unmotivated warrior mercenaries. <sighs> because none of my devotees fear death. Uh huh. No. Uh, and I will de demonstrate to you this terrible truth. The point to any two men in my entourage, throne room, challenges Hashishan. So Falcon, oh yeah, he snaps his fingers uh, contemptuously towards two harem boys named Jamshid and Baalam, mm -hmm. dutifully holding uh, fiber baskets of the finest pitted dates from uh, Bandarabas. <clears throat> Lots of palm trees along the Straits of Hormuz there. I guess. Uh... Yeah. The boys instinctively, what do they do? They they turn towards Falcon, pull down their pantalons, bearing their bottoms towards him. Uh, no, not that. He's straight, whispers Hashishan. I want you to plunge into the hamlet of Kaiser Khan. <laughs> Jamshid blushes <clears throat> all the attention. Ever since she post-transgender into eunuch. Yet he, she, <clears throat> they, know no fear. So without hesitation, they, all, her and he, inside, they're okay, you're okay. <laughs> Head first and over the precipice. Uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Splat? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the residence right under the window of Hasishan's uh, glorious throne room. They're hip. They're practical peasants. So they've built thick sycamore beam 
over roof over the regular roofs of missile missile uh, mud thistle they missile it up but it wasn't enough because otherwise here comes one of Hashishan's boys <laughs> coming through the roof just as they're serving <laughs> eggplant bread and uh, pilaf and they don't like people to mess with their baked eggplant. It's been on a long trip from the seed of the eggplant to the growing. And yeah. Um, well, then eager to follow? <laughs> Bahram acrobatically dive bombs off. <laughs> also. He hurls himself off the rock, uh, doing a reverse somersault with the one and a half twist. His yahoo echoes off the <laughs> narrow canyon walls, mm. mm -hmm. crisply echoing. Oh. Gravity, huh? <laughs> Don't pick a fight with gravity. Does its um, thing. Mm -hmm. Faithful to its nature. It pulls these boys toward the center of the earth. <laughs> Just blah. Again, crisply echoes. Liquefied corporeal remnants slide harmlessly off the outer sycamore beam roofs and into scoopment eaves, which lead to barrels, uh, you know, and they get this ex uh juice by now <clears throat> into barrels, and, and they, <laughs> they sell it to the four muleteers. After hitting it four times, or it's free, I'll take four gold ducats a barrel. We don't have any competition. Eh? Don't make me say five. Okay, so they buy it. And <laughs> the four muleteers of Caspian Rice, they've been around a long time, huh? They whack it another ten times and sell it to Chinese merchants. Apparently, yeah. A uh, loss somewhere off the... They thought they were on the Silk Road. Uh, you should have made a left at uh, Peshawar. They went straight. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, the Chinese, <laughs> they, they, they whack it even more and sell it as potions of courage and sexuality, uh, aphrodisiac. Uh, because everybody has fucked their brains out so much up at the party camp at the top of the rock that all the cells are, are saturated. All the synapses are up. More than four hours at a time. Yeah. Well. Um, Hashishan now befriends Falcon. Yeah, he comes over, he puts his arm around him, and he guides him on a little tour of the pad, you know. Uh, they start with the 400-room harem quarters. Wow. Whew. And then through the bathhouse where um, Fatima is sponge bathing Moksana with one of those basket of Venus sponges from Sponge Island in the Greek islands. If you read Yearning for Earth Legs, you would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, we got those sponges, basket of Venus sponges. Well, what happens to Falcon? <laughs> he gets a phallic erection. Um as he's introduced to Fatima, as his 
uh, gifted pre-chosen <laughs> lover for the night. Wow, uh, that night, huh? Well, Falcon says, uh, good night, and welcome to our sect of the assassins. Falcon's like, did I even join this thing? But, you know, kind of, it feels so good. Fatima? Uh, and, and he's so excited when she disrobes. Uh, she has fabulous breasts. Famous. In Istanbul, they know about her breasts. Every time Falcon, excitement makes him kind of want to sneeze. But she would grab him by the back of the neck and force his nose into the canyons of flesh between her fabulous. Mm -hmm. She just kept dunking him in every time he... Yeah, and uh, by the morning, he was cured. <laughs> he never sneezed again. Mm -hmm. We're talking Persian miracle moment. Hope everyone's appreciating the dramatic moment of it. Well... That night, well, he had his 2,000 warriors also suddenly standing there in the salon. What to do? Well, the 400 courtesans came, and they each picked about five warriors. <clears throat> well, now they're assassins, wannabes, um, and they initiate them. <laughs> I mean, freshly unhooded, many virgins, Spurting like Persian f fountains of frankincense. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. And uh, the revolutionary aspect of this whole scene, of Hashishan up here, okay, is he freely shares uh, his lovers with everyone. Yeah. Absolute free behavior and women for lesbian one-on-one -on -one lesbian uh, centuries ahead of his time uh, Hashishan freezes eunuchs to play with whomever they desire or <laughs> desire them eunuchs infamous endless Orgasm generating tongue work aficionados, eunuchs. They never orgasm themselves because, whoops, it's not there anymore. So they can selflessly, you know, set the game of having your male orgasm, set it aside, get on a tantric plateau, you'll never be able to get off. Selflessly lick, they do, and <clears throat> suck like overexcited, passionate animals <clears throat> forever. <laughs> this is every sexually healthy woman's dream come true. 